What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Malaika, aka Mali, aka Malibu, whatever you want to call me. You know, it's me. And uh, did y'all miss me? Did y'all miss me? Did you miss me? Because I took, I think, a week break, week and a half maybe, from YouTube. I was just feeling tired and a little bit sick, but um, here I am. Um, so you're probably here because of the title and I'm about to get into it. Um, but before I do, I do want to say remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And all right, let's go. basically a story time and don't click off the video you're already here you are already here I did not get fired from my present job but I want to talk about a previous job that I was fired from but we're gonna get into it which is why I'm like fired from anywho so uh, so when I when I left college well towards the end of college I felt so unemployed I was like, I need a job ASAP. I'm about to be leaving school and I now feel like I'm, I'm a part of the unemployed group of people in Jamaica and I need a job like right now. So, you know, sometimes the devil is listening to our prayers and he presents things that appear to be, you know, an answer to your prayer, but there it's really not. Anywho, so, uh, one of the workers at my college she you know she was advertising for this lady who needed teachers for her institution it was a private institution now guys first and foremost let me say know your worth know your worth because first of all I teach Spanish and French for those of you who do not know if you're new um, I teach Spanish and French and for the most part Spanish and French teachers are always needed so I didn't need to jump into any um offer especially for a private school that's not paying much but anywho i was like okay um i went to the school i did the interview and you know of course when you when you do an interview for any job especially in jamaica you're going to go you're going to dress up with whatever good clothes you have and that's what i did i went in my nice clothes um quote unquote nice clothes for an interview then i realized that the atmosphere was rather casual um you know the lady she well you know she was the director of the school it, i find it hard to say principal because i don't see her in that light to say principal because i more saw her as a um it was more of a business for her than even a school and i'm gonna get into that later on as to why i said that but anywho um right she was in a polo shirt um, the school had that polo shirt kind of vibe, a polo shirt and jeans. But okay, cool, whatever. It's a private school. They may not have like a formal or traditional type of school dressing like the other public schools would, right? Anywho, so we spoke. It wasn't like an interview interview. We spoke and I realized that in the conversation, she asked me to tell her the subjects that I did for CSEC. And I did, and I, you know, of course, it's an interview, and you bring your stuff as proof, and I was, you know, taking out my certificate to show her, and she was like, no, that's okay, that's okay, I don't need to see that. So that was the first red flag, because I'm like, what if I'm lying? What if I'm lying about my qualifications? Because, of course, I wouldn't have, like, a degree in hand at yet, at, at that point, right? Because um, I was just leaving school, graduation didn't happen yet, or anything like that. Um, but right, so, so I would only have CSEC behind my name, technically. Anywho um right so i told her all the subjects that i did in high school what i got what grade i got them at and she was like okay great she was getting all excited because she was like okay she can tell her parents that she has a spanish teacher no and i guess that would definitely be a plus for her for her private school um started the job so this interview interview was like on a friday and she wanted me to start the monday started the monday and everything was going fine, I guess. 
um i did notice though there were a few things that i was uncomfortable with because the school it, it had like a daytime part to it and also on like an afternoon like an afternoon session even evening school um i don't know if i should say evening school what do we call it again you know after school <laughs> classes um right for high school students who were like enrolled in public schools who needed extra lessons that's what we call it extra lessons right it had an extra lessons component to it um so while i was teaching spanish there i don't remember if i was teaching french was i i think so maybe for the extra lessons part of it but spanish daytime the daytime school had students ranging from what we would call primary age in jamaica which is like ages 6 to 11 and all the way to high school that would be 12 to about 16 17 right she asked me one day she gave me like this outline as to what i should do for the next day and i realized that it had a math class on it and a math topic and i was like i can't teach math and in that moment i was like oh my god if this lady is looking for a teacher to really teach math i would have to give this job up because i don't do math well i am not good at math at all the very first time i did math in cxc i got a four and i redid it in college and i got a two okay so even though i have a two and i even told her in that moment i was like listen i have a two in math but i'm not good at it and i even explained listen i got a four first worked hard got a two i really cannot teach math and these topics were like c-sec topics you know so she was like that's why I'm giving you the topic from now so you can go home and learn it and come back and teach it tomorrow. And I'm like, does this lady understand how the brain works? <laughs> does this lady understand how the brain works? Because that's, that's just not how math works. If you're not somebody who is good at numbers and doing all of that, going home and learning it on YouTube will not automatically just let you, you know, feel confident in what you're doing and to teach it to somebody else, right? That was a red flag because I'm like, if you care about your students, you would definitely care about, you know, the teachers that you have, the quality of teachers that you have and what they can or cannot teach. And if you have to say, listen, I really needed somebody who is f very flexible, somebody who can teach math and all sorts of subjects, but you're not it. I wouldn't feel any way because at the end of the day, this is your school, this is your business, and you have to do what is right for your school. Anyway, <laughs> um, I went home, I did the, the YouTube thing, tried to learn that topic, went the next day to teach the high school section of the school that she had. Um, the math topic and of course they could realize that I didn't know what I was doing because of course you have students in there that know math more than me and they have been receiving math lessons prior to and they were able to tell me what are you doing da, da, da. this is not how so this go and I just left them alone anywho um, at the same time I it just so happened that when I just, just started working at that institution that private institution I received um an invitation to to interview with a public school nearby um so i did that interview and i was actually waiting for them to call me back to say whether i got through or not and i was also preparing something to go to columbia because the college that i went to short with teachers college they <laughs> i'm sorry you guys i heard that sound they um they had this Thing going on where students when they left um they could well not all students students who you know did spanish and french could go to colombia to teach spanish and if they did french they could go to france to teach french anyway you could go to colombia to teach english i'm sorry not spanish you could go to colombia to teach english as a second language and you could go to france to teach english as a second language as well anywho right so i was waiting on that call from colombia or from that institution that i had applied to I got something from Colombia, but it wasn't like a definite thing. Um, and maybe I'll talk about this in another video um, because that in and of itself was another testimony really. But uh, I knew that something was working out for me. And the policy or the based on the contract that I had signed with this lady, you know, she asked that if you're leaving, give her two weeks notice. And likewise, if she's going to fire you, she's also going to give you two weeks notice cool so from my end i was like you know what what this lady is offering me as pay and i can't speak it publicly she was just paying forty thousand for the month <laughs> guys i know i know 
clearly I was too desperate. 40 grand for the month? Come on. But, I, you know, leaving college, you really feel like you want to just jump in, get some experience, because you feel so inexperienced, you feel so unemployed. So, yeah, I had accepted that offer for 40 grand, and she did say that that 40 grand was like a probation um, money, and after three months, you would get like like a 90,000 or something like that. So I was like, okay, cool. Anywho, um, where am I with this story, guys? You know that I'm always all over the place, but let me get my thoughts back together. Right, so something was working out with Columbia, and I gave her the notice. That's the thing, right? So I wrote a resignation letter, um, because I was like, I really don't need to be, I don't need to waste my summer and be here. This was after being at this place for like a week plus. I, you know, I told her, I, I wrote the resignation letter, and I, the moment I went to the office, I think she realized what it was going to be, because this lady was used to losing um, employees, okay? So she was like, you know what, I don't even need to read that, just talk to me. And so I told her, you know, um, I got a job offer in another country, in Colombia, and uh, um, after two weeks, I think uh, I won't be here anymore. And she said, oh, God. Oh God, I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go because you know you teach Spanish and you're doing such a good job and blah blah blah. And tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. It's a it's a forty thousand body and you tell me what you want. Tell me how much money you um I could give you for you to stay. And I told her, well, if you're gonna give me more money, it has to be close to what a regular teacher would be getting in a public school or just close to that. Right, it can be. As, as I told her that it has to be at least a hundred thousand because a public school teacher would be getting over a hundred thousand, so even a hundred thousand flat, I could work with that. And she was like, Okay, whatever is my price, she's going to meet me there. Um, blah blah black sheep. And the lady started to say, And then after that, like for about three days, every time she see me, she would talk about how much you don't want me to leave and how, um, she had to go to Obia man to make sure someone not leave because she wanted to stay at the place and just extra and dramatic. Anywho, it's after that week passed off, after it was, you know, you know, established that I was leaving, it seemed as if she, you know, had put out an advertisement, which she should rightly do, but it seemed as if she also hired somebody already for the job. So she started to show me like a bad face. And suddenly, everything that I did was an issue. Remember, let me go back to the start of the story. Remember I told you, the very first day I went to this place, um, it was a relaxed dressing. Polo shirt, jeans. Um, she Also, she told me that I could wear polo shirt and jeans or a button front shirt. You know those, not polo shirt material, but a work shirt, whatever we call those, a shirt. Button front shirt and jeans, but she said she prefers if you know I wear black jeans because that looks more professional. Guys, could you believe that when I put on my black jeans, I wore a black jean skirt to work, and she made a big deal out of it. Why are you in jeans? Why are you in jeans? That's so unprofessional. And I was like, but from the start, you told me that I could wear jeans to work. Um. If oh then she realized and then she was like but if it's going to be jeans it's, it's better it's, if it's a jeans pants and not a jeans skirt anyway then I think because I think I worked on Saturdays as well if I'm remembering clearly I think I did work on Saturdays yes I did work on Saturdays um, I was there one Saturday and uh, um, I think I was the last person so I, I was the one to lock up or whatever it was and I think a student left something behind, like a pizza box or something. Um, I did tell the student prior to, to, you know, remember to take up a pizza box, but we were waiting on his parent for so long. By the time his parent came, I forgot about it, he forgot about it, we forgot about it. The next day, when I, the next business day when I showed up for work, which I think was the Monday, no, or the Sunday, it was the Sunday because we also had Sunday classes. Um, she was really upset. Um, and I explained to her, you know, it was just an oversight. Both both myself and the student forgot about it. It didn't have to be a big issue. And it was an empty pizza box. No crumbs or anything was in it. Um, it was a big issue. And then she called a staff meeting. And when I said, I have to put it like that because it was literally like three or four of us working there. 
and including the secretary. So she, the, the secretary was a part of that st staff meeting. Um, and one of my friends that I had told about the place and we were, four of us working there. Um, and in the staff meeting, she just started to go off on me. And then she was like, as a matter of fact, you can leave now. I'm like, this is it, I'm fired. And then she was like, yes, you can go. And then I said, thank God. Then I was, I remember I turned back to say something else because at that point I was like, you know what? I should probably tell this lady in my mind. Um, then she was like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Like she, she, she probably smelled the rap because I was really going to give her a piece, a good piece of my mind. Anywho, <laughs> and I even found out later on that, you know, this lady doesn't have a degree or anything. So that's why I said that this for her wasn't like a real school. It was just a hustle. This was just a hustle, a way to make a little money. She did not care about these kids and their actual education. Um, so I was like, I, I know I titled this as I got fired, but technically I quit and then got fired, which doesn't make sense because it was already established that I was leaving within two weeks. So, but technically I got to leave before that, um, that two week time frame would have ended. And that was it. Guys, tell me if you think this is bizarre or this was bizarre or <laughs> if there's something that you guys want me to clarify from this story. But whatever I said, that was what it was in this story. But anywho, afterwards, you know, let me go ahead to, um, to tell my testimony. So this is a bonus for this video. So you guys, I said I had an offer from a school in Colombia and also from another school in Jamaica. I was waiting on both of them for an official thing. The Colombia thing, it was like uh, my friend, he was already working in Colombia and his school needed an, another teacher. And he told me that, you know, the principal said that she would take me, whatever. And I said to him, listen, I need something concrete from the school. I need an email, a letter, something from the school saying you are being employed because I can't just get up and do things stop job searching when i haven't gotten some something official from the school so um i believe in my friends word and everything and uh, i was just waiting on that official letter from the school while waiting for the other school in jamaica to also call me back and tell me whether i was successful with that or not so so even though i had resigned from the job without getting that official confirmation from colombia i did believe that it would work out anywho um <laughs> guys this is a testimony because in that I, I in my mind i was like i don't know what direction to go in what direction to go do i want to go to colombia or do i want to remain in jamaica and i prayed about it and i said god here's my thing whichever way you think i should go let me hear from that school first guys i remember it like yesterday it was a wednesday and because you know you're in job hunting mode, every minute you're checking your email to see if something has, you know, you know, something come in. And I was checking my email that day and it would not load. Everything else on the internet was working fine. Every other website was working fine, but my email would not load. It kept saying whatever message, error message kept coming up. And believe you me, remember and I told God whichever, whichever school you want me to be in, or to work in let me hear from them first i remember the 12 o'clock i got this i got the call and i'm going to say the name of the school now i got the call from immaculate um from um then hod or who would have been my hod to say congratulations your interview was successful yeah, yeah. and of course i was excited and all of that and could you believe 10 minutes after that phone call i checked my email the email that wasn't popping up all along and when I checked it, it popped up and there was a, an official email from the school in Colombia also telling me that, you know, I've been accepted to teach at their institution. And I'm like, wow, if this wasn't a sign, I don't know <laughs> what it was because the fact that I could not access my email all along and know it was popping up. Clearly, I needed to be at Immaculate and not in Colombia at the time. And everything worked out. Everything works out according to God's will, according to God's purpose. Because perhaps had I not been in Jamaica, maybe I wouldn't, you know, have continued dating my husband. Maybe we wouldn't have been married now. And maybe both of us wouldn't be in the U.S. right now. Like, you know, life has a way of, you know, just working out for your good. Once you keep trusting in God and following his direction.
anyway so that's my story of how i got fired and also my little testimony as to you know how i got and guys i don't put that first job on my resume at all like technically i just worked there for like three weeks yeah i don't put that on my resume at all and not to mention when i left the lady took took forever to pay me my money my little money Ugh, anywho but yes guys thank you so much for watching remember to like comment share and subscribe um i'll not leave you guys alone again maybe i'll start doing weekly videos instead of twice weekly i don't know we'll work it out but guys we have more live videos coming up we'll be talking about working in france working in spain working in there's another one. Oh my god the country just slipped me but we have different countries to talk about i'll also be giving you guys more information on more online teaching opportunities teaching english online as a matter of fact i think i'm gonna do one this saturday on this company that i've been working with that i tested it out and i just want to share the information with you guys so stay tuned to that give this video a thumbs up if you have not yet already and you know it's a girl malaika aka mali aka malibu whatever you want to call me it's me my instagram is no longer mali.boo but i am now malaika's flex on all socials bye have a good one y'all